Microphone check, one, two, what is this? Moen Styles back with the Brooklyn Boys. Business! <laughs> what up, what up, y'all? What's good, my nigga? What the fuck was that you just came up with, man? <laughs> on the fly, on the fly. Okay, okay cool. Okay, okay. Welcome back to another week of Brooklyn Boys Radio. Radio. What's up, good people? Y'all good today? Hope everybody's well. Hope y'all had a great Valentine's Day. Shit. How was your Valentine's Day, brother? <laughs> Why you always trying to make me sad? Oh my god. Nah, 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 nah. I was chilling, man. I was I, I was actually in the crib for the most part of the day. And um I did go get something to eat real quick, but it was nothing crazy, you know what I mean? Um and you know, had a good time. Okay. That's good. That's good. Nothing night. crazy, nothing, you know what I mean? Just chilling. What about yourself? Yeah, Valentine's Day was cool, you know. Did a couple of things, you know? A couple of things? Like what? Like, 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 he got a Kool-Aid ass smile on his face. A couple no things like what? I'm just saying, you know? It's a good but day. It sounded like your day was better than mine, boy. Boy, I'm active to mine. Cut your bullshit, man. Come on. You're not going to tell me how, how active your day was? It was productive. Was? Gifts was the exchange? No, it was productive, man. No flowers? You know me? No teddy bears? No chocolate? No candy? You was a nosy motherfucker. Leave me alone. <laughs> anyway, on to the next thing. Just like that? What? I want to tap into Cupid. Draw back your bow. Can't tap into that. You want to talk about songs? Shots fired. Shots. All right. Okay. <laughs> 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 when we talk. <laughs> Yo. Yo. We're not going to address that. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, happy Valentine's. Uh, happy Valentine's belated, Day to all, man. Belated by the time so all people Hope y'all had a great time. Hope y'all got everything y'all heart desires. Chocolates, teddy bears, cards. And look, man, if you time. didn't get shit. That's a shame. It's all good. It's all good, man. Don't force nothing that ain't supposed to be. That nigga didn't buy you nothing and she didn't think about you. That's a shame. Fuck her and fuck exactly. you. How about that? Don't be out there convincing people to like you, man. Shouldn't be jumping through hoops. Somebody likes you, they like you. If they no. don't... That's fine, too. You know what? I ask a question. <laughs> Since we talking about Valentine's Day. But before you do that, I just want to say, make sure y'all like, share, yes. and subscribe. Like, share, and subscribe. Stop right now. Press that like, that thumbs up. Subscribe to the page. You know, we got some really good content coming up. So, like, share, and Please and ask subscribe. me a bunch of questions, because I like going back and answering people's questions. And yo, Suave, this light right here is blinding me today. I don't know sure. what's happening, why it's so bright in my face, but... Just letting you know. But back to you, Mo. <laughs> um, you know what I, I ain't understand? What I don't understand, too? I was talking to a friend of mine this week, and she had this real dope dude, right? She keep telling me how dope the dude is. But she kept going back to the other, the, the, the dickhead dude that she, you know, I guess she loved, and you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The heart wants what the heart wants, unfortunately. So I, I was, my question is, why do it seem like Women or men, sometimes us too, we always want the person that's not for us instead of the person that could be right for us. You know what's crazy? I, I find it to be just a character. It's a flaw of the human condition. It's like a human characteristic that we always want what we can't have. Um, it's against the laws of physics, right? It's like you can't want something if you have it because if you have it, you don't want it. You have it. You know what I mean? So people always want what they can't have, unfortunately. Um, and and, so, and I think that's why it's so hard for people to find happiness because when people do find the person that wants them, um, I call it the old toy syndrome. Whereas, you know, it's like a child, right? You get a child a toy, they play with it for a month. After that, you can find it in the back of the closet. You can find it under the bed. The child doesn't play with it anymore, doesn't give it any attention. But the second you try to take that toy and give it to another child, that child is going to go crazy. Why? Because they still love it. Right? And they don't want no one else to have it. But because they know that it's theirs, they don't pay it any attention. <clears throat> I had an even crazy situation um, not too long ago. Well, probably a little while ago. I won't say not too long ago. But I remember I was dating this girl, right? I was well, attempting to date her, uh -huh. right? And, you know, to me, I think I've showed her everything, you know, what a man is supposed to be or how he's supposed to act and conduct himself when he's with a woman. And, you know, she she thought I was very handsome. Um, she loved how I, the, the father I was to my kid. She's she been in my house. She liked my cooking. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. She liked the crib. Oh, you live so nice. Ah. She always thought I was accomplished and stuff like that. But then she was like, you know, at some point she would say, at one time she had told me she was going back to her ex mm-hmm. that was giving her issues. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I waited it out for a little while. Went back to it. Guess what? The ex is gone. It was a piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? Some shit happened. Mm-hmm. Then we started pursuing each other. I started pursuing it again. She hung out again, had a wonderful time again, and everything was peachy cream. And then she goes, I think we should just be friends. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. She said, you got, she basically told me I got all this dope shit happening, but she said that she's not right right now. And I, I, I don't understand sometimes, women always say that. I, I don't think men say that as much. I see women always go, they got to figure out themselves or they got to find themselves or, you know, why would you let somebody break you to the point or things break you to the point where you can't move forward? Well, I think th- the best way I could explain that is um, <clears throat> people have to feel right within themselves. They have to feel right within their spirit. They have to feel that they're ready before they can pursue anything with anyone else. I think that that's them preventing a problem later on because mm. they feel that they're not in the right mind space or their heart isn't in the right space at the moment for them to fully pursue it. So I think it's actually a good thing. The best comparison I can give, it's like you being dressed in an outfit that you don't like, right? And I'm like, yo, style, let's go out tonight. I want to go to the club. And you're like, nah, Mo, I don't want to go because you're not comfortable in what you have on. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm paying. I'm going to pay the admission. I'm buying the drinks. You ain't got to pay for nothing. And you're like, Mo, nah. I don't want to go. Mm-hmm. You understand? And in my mind, I won't be able to understand why you don't want to go, right? But it's because you don't feel right with right, yourself. So, so let me ask you this question. So how come all the time this happens then? Two months later, old dickhead come back around or some new dickhead come back around and then they wind up with the same, another nigga that just do them dirty. Like, it always seems to happen like that. So just like, let's take an example again. Yo, Mo, we go hang out at the club. So next month, I choose to go out with bang bang shoot him up my homeboy and then the whole club get shot up when i could have went out and you know what i'm saying say like no i got get i get where you coming from man I, I just think that when it comes to when it comes to people there's an x factor that can't be explained right mm-hmm. um i just think it's it's a thing with attraction right we walk into a room and we're attracted to certain people and we have no control over who we're attracted to right Definitely. um this person could look better on paper their life could be more together but for some reason you're just attracted to this person who ain't got shit, shit. going on. That's a you know, well, I've been there before. Yeah, and, and I, I've been there before. I have some good. I had some good women in my life, and I've been attracted to dickhead over here. You know what I'm saying? She like her body's crazy. She beautiful, but she ain't got shit up here. <laughs> she ain't got nothing. Yeah, happen. and yeah, yeah, you know, and, 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 this, and this is why I really don't try to understand people. You know, my thing has always been. If you like me and I like you, great. And if I like you and you don't like me, that's fine too. You understand? Mm. And I'll just leave you alone because okay. I, I don't have, I, I, I really believe in mutual interest and I don't believe in convincing anyone to like me, bro. I don't have time for it. It's, but what I will say, and I think I heard this from you a while ago, some people too are draining people. They are just draining you, right? Mm-hmm. Some people are take, take, take. I think the example we were talking about a couple of weeks ago he was like, yo, it's like an open bar. If your bar was open, mm-hmm. right? And you said um, if the bar was open and... Um, I, I said, I said you have to put people in a position to perform, right? 100%. You can't continue to allow people to take from you, right? Mm-hmm. There's a point where you get where you have to set that boundary. Like, nah, I'm not going to allow you to take. You're going to have to reciprocate. And the reason being, the metaphor I had given you was, it's like if you have a club and every weekend, no admission, open bar. People are going to come... Every weekend, they're going to drink until they get drunk. They're going to fuck your club up. And at the end of the night, they're going to leave. They're not going to help you clean up. They're not going to do anything. And at no point, it could be three years of them coming every weekend and drinking for free. At no point are they going to go, hey, you know what? We've been drinking for free for the last three years. We should pay. No. If you do not say, guess what? Tonight, y'all are going to have to pay. They're going to keep coming and drinking for free. And it's the same thing with people, bro. As long as you're allowing them to take and you don't set your boundaries of, look, this is what I require. I require some type of reciprocation. They're just going to keep taking. Well, listen, on that note, if you didn't have a good Valentine's Day, I hope we gave you some good pointers. 
the how to pick a good Valentine's for next year, all right? So we're going to get back into our regularly scheduled program, you know, and talk the shit that we talk. I just want to get some love talking in the air and for those people that was feeling sad and didn't have nobody. Don't feel sad, man. Nothing to feel sad about. You woke up and you had life, so that's good. That's good in itself. Let me tell you, better to be alone than to be miserable with somebody else. Or somebody that's going to make you even more miserable. I always, I always, I always <laughs> say, if I'm going to be miserable, it's going to be because of me and not nobody else, God damn it. You know, check this out. <clears throat> I was watching on the news the other day, and, you know, I'm, easy pass go throughout the whole country, right? Because uh, every time so. I drive out of 95, I, I'd still be seeing easy pass. I believe pass. so. So I don't know if it's like this everywhere, but in New York City, if you don't pay the easy pass toll, so your toll could be like $16, uh, $12, them, $8. Them, them fees in Jersey are crazy. And if you miss the payment, even one payment, that shit could shoot up to $100. Next thing you know, what at the one fee, point... The fee could be $100. Yeah, the, 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 the late fee. One point, I think I had about, I don't know, about $15,000 in late fees. My man, my man, my man paid off $17,000 in, in um, Easy Fast fees because they had confiscated his car and he had to pay it or... He wouldn't have been able to get his car back. I think the from the fifteen that I had, I I, I talked them down. <clears throat> and mind you, my fifteen thousand dollars of fees, How much? I only owed a hundred dollars of change, like a hundred and eight dollars in, in totals, right? Crazy. hundred and eight dollars, and that went to fifteen thousand. And then I talked them down to like twenty one hundred or something like that. Y'all do me a y'all can hit Kim a biz up. She'll get all those fees down for you. So hit my old girl Kim. Kim K-I-M-A-B-I-Z. Yeah, she'll get rid of Kim, all Kim, what up? Kim, what up, take Kim? care of everything. Kim is superwoman. Yeah, she'll take care of you. A lot of any of those kind of problems you have, call Kim. She'll make it happen for you. But DM her. Yeah. I got the uh Tell a Brooklyn Boys Radio sent you. <laughs> I got the um I got the fee down to about twenty one, but still twenty one hundred. From a hundred and eight dollars, but that's why I don't, I don't play with Easy Pass, bro. I got my my Easy Pass is on replenish. Once it goes under ten dollars, bro, they fill it right. And back I hate up. the Easy Pass replenish because I don't really be on the bridges like that. So I, I think I got mine set at like sixty. Then I think I went to the bridge like two days in a row. Then niggas just say, "Hey, yeah, we're gonna take eighty to take." Like, see, but everybody, then, everybody tells me they have that issue. I never have that issue. Once my Easy Pass, I said it, and they, goes they under went ten dollars. They owe. They just take twenty five dollars. They they add twenty five. Nah, I, 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 they I didn't never, even give me a triple you know twenty five. Let me not say option. I never have that issue because I don't want to jinx myself. Yeah, they never gave me the twenty five dollar option, B. I wish I had the twenty five dollar option. Um, so in more news today, you know, I'll be on that Instagram shit and I was watching um this big trend that's been going on. Everybody, not the most credible news, but I don't know if this is news, but I just been watching this shit on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Everybody with these red boots. What the fuck is that? That shit look like Popeye olive oil shoes, man. Sonic the Hedgehog boots. As a matter of fact, no. You know, you gotta those see, boots are actually like olive oil. boots from Dora. Boots, the little monkey from Dora. Those are the same red boots that he wears. And his name is Boots. This shit is weird. Oh, boots, boots? Boots, yeah, it's boots, boots. Yo, that shit is crazy. I don't, I see men, women with like them shits don't even look fly. Like any, everybody do anything to get attention. I don't be understand. Why would you want your? They don't even look comfortable to walk in, b. I, I really feel like everybody's tr everybody wants to be unique so bad that the weirdest. Nah, something that's not is, unique though, because everybody have them. But but the, but this is what I'm saying. The weirder something is, the more people, the the more out the box it is, the more people just want to jump out the window with it. These niggas look like Ronald McDonald. They look like clowns. I would, I would never wear them. <laughs> never. Y'all yeah, niggas look like never. clowns. All y'all females and niggas is wearing this shit. Yeah, never. I said it. Y'all look like clowns. Baby. And then, and I tell you this: wait until they start coming out with different colors, then everybody really gonna be getting them. <laughs> you know, it's just like it's just like all white low top air force. I want to smack a nigga and fight a nigga with them boots on and see how like how he gonna move with them shit. Why you always wanna? I just want to see how he gonna move in the boots. Like, I want to start like just let off a couple of shots and the nigga start running. Like, and and I saw like a video. I forgot who was wearing them. That they hard as hell to take off. And the boots look hot as hell, bro. And man, I don't hot as in a good. I'm just talking about hot like heat. Like your feet to be. Ugh. I understand those boots. Anyway, so in NBA news today. I did see your man, uh, Cam Cam Thomas from the Brooklyn Nets. He had a he had said no homo. Mm -hmm. And uh, they and NBA they fined him forty thousand dollars, which I really didn't understand. You know what I mean? Like, it's funny to me because I watch. I understand why they did it because of the no homo and what it. I guess what it means in our culture. But it's funny. I was watching this commercial. I was watching ESPN, 
and they, they they said they had to suspend them. But the commercial they played after it made me laugh. So it's I don't I don't know what it's a phone commercial. I think it's a Google phone. Uh-huh. But Giannis, right? And it's a guy, he's in the back eating a hot dog. And they like, oh no, no, Glizzy. Like pause. Like pause. Like it's the same, it's the same thing. thing. It's the so same thing. You got a whole commercial. But I blame I blame us for that. I blame us for that. Because at the end of the day, we have been playing this political game and we've been censoring ourselves and not speaking our minds simply because to make everybody else comfortable. I mean, that's the one thing I love about this show. And it's not about quote unquote keeping it real, but it's like, nah, bro, I'm going to be my authentic fucking self. And if I don't like something, I'm going to say I don't like it. And if somebody don't like it, that's their goddamn problem, bro. And if you're uncomfortable, you're uncomfortable. There's a lot of things that make me uncomfortable, but people do it anyway. And guess what? I have to deal with it. So I'm going to be my authentic self. And this is why I say I blame I blame us to a degree, bro, because we keep abiding by everybody's rules and we keep censoring ourselves and we keep shrinking ourselves to make other people comfortable. Well, I'm glad you went to somewhere that I wasn't going to go yet, but we could go there since you went there. And I think I had told we were speaking earlier this week again. and I told you, I said we give life to so many different things. When we were growing up, I never heard the word toxic as much as I hear now. No. When we was growing up, I never heard mental illness. And ever since we give life to those words and those words became something, it's like everybody has it. It becomes a crutch. Everybody has a mental illness. Everybody's toxic, whether it's toxic ma- mil- mas- masculinity. Toxic masculinity. It, it, you know what I'm saying? It, and it's so crazy to me. We breathe life into these things. These situations never happen. And for me, you know, you had disagreed with me a little bit, but I just feel like everybody grew up in an environment that's fucked up. I don't think life is full of trials and tribulations. I'm Correct. falling. And, no, it, and I you can't know, get up. We say sometimes how we grew up, it was normal. It wasn't, it normal, wasn't but, normal. But we do, do, do. look at it, is it normal? But, you know, I was watching something the other day about, um, not Rwanda, about the, uh, the Congo. Mm-hmm. And the kid was like, yeah, he, you know, they killed his mother, they killed his father, they raped his sister, they killed his little, two little brothers. And it was just crazy. And I'm like, damn, who could live like that? And I, and I would say to myself, like, that's trauma in itself, right? Like, that got to be trauma for that man to live like that. But if he lived, he'd probably take the way I live way more than what he lived. And then little Becky over here who didn't get the red BMW from her mother, she probably feel like that's trauma because that's the worst she ever been through. And I feel like we all go through some type of trauma in life. And we, we, you know, a couple of years ago, they took out the bully. You remember when they said, mm-hmm. stop bullying? Mm-hmm. Now, which, when I, which, which, which I, I don't agree with. Because I didn't I believe, agree with. I believe that bullying is a right, right, it's a of, right passage. of passage. It's yeah. a right of passage. And those kids, now they can't deal with shit when they get out into the real world. world. Yeah. So now you got people who can't deal with quote unquote trauma because what, what, we label all this shit and we make them things instead of letting people figure out how to get past it. Yeah, I mean, what they're doing is they're removing the struggle from life. And when you remove the struggle, then you're, you're actually um, ending up with people who don't know how to overcome obstacles. They don't know how to deal with stress. They don't know how to uh, overcome the hardships. You understand? Um, I think back to when we were younger. I mean, the rate of teenage suicide was... It shot up like the... Exactly. And I, I think that we are... By removing the bully, by um, not allowing our children to go through these rites of passage, what we're doing is we're actually not preparing them for you're life. Them. When, when, we're hindering them, and what we're doing is we're giving them a false sense of what life will be, right? And this is why it's almost like a lot of a lot a lot of these kids they think that the world is supposed to adjust to them. Not realizing that that's not the way life works. And they got to adjust to the world. They got to adjust to the world. And figure it out. <laughs> they, exactly. Bump their head a little bit and figure this shit out. Listen, I remember I remember when um, when I was young, I had this dude on my block, whatever. I was like, when I was like seven, eight years old, he used to bully me. You know, and my brother told me. He was like, look, man, next time you let this dude bully you, I'm going to whoop your ass. So after he whoop your ass, I'm going to whoop your ass. My mother sent me to the store. I go to the store. Go get whatever for my moms. I'm coming back to the building. Who's standing in front of the building? The kid. Walks up to me. Yo, let me get a quarter. 
Well, I look up, my brother's looking out the window. I'm like, mm. God damn. <laughs> and you know what? I whooped Shorty's ass, bro. Whooped his ass. You understand? And and it's so funny because it was at that moment. I had never realized my own potential. You understand? Mm. Like, because it's the same thing like in life. Your fear, until you overcome it, you're not going to realize what you're capable of. You know what I mean? And and I always say this. Fear is something that you could either put in front of you and let it serve as an obstacle or it's something that you could put behind you and let it push you. You understand what mm. I mean? And that day, I decided to take my fear and place it behind me and let it push me. And I whooped dude ass. And, and after that incident, like I realized like, oh shit, I could fight. <laughs> you know no, what I definitely. mean? I had an I, incident like and, that too. And I realized yeah. my strength and I realized my potential. And what that did was it gave me confidence. You know, start to shape and build who it, you it started to become. shape and build me into who I became. And we try to cut that shit out of these kids' life so much and just cut it out of society so much that we just keep it labeling things and give it. Yo, like this power, this is a scripture that says life and death is in the tongue. So it's power in words. It's power in what you say and we give it power and we start to see it. Now when we start to see shit manifest all over the world, all over the world, because every day you hear somebody, oh, he had mental health, she had mental like, oh, this person had trauma, and we start giving it so much power, now we're seeing this taking over all over the place. We got to chill with giving these words the power. We got to let situations happen and let people go through shit, man, you know what I mean? But it is what it is. Anyway, more NBA, not NBA news, kind of like was NBA, it was more, won't well, not say Kyrie, it was more Kanye West. So I saw Adidas this week. Um, reportedly said they lost $1.3 billion dollars from cutting uh, Kanye, Kanye out. Now, the question I got to ask for that, the Jewish people that told Adida, like, yo, what's the name of the Jewish organization? Uh, the Anti-Defamation League. And they told him, yo, told Adida they got to get rid of Kanye. Are they going to give him any money? No, of course not. So they're going to leave him ass out? Yeah, of course. So they told them niggas, fuck your business, get rid of this nigga, cripple your shit. And we ain't going to give you no money, no support, no nothing. I mean, listen, I don't know. I guess it's all part of building relationships. I guess they I, feel that they would need them somewhere down the line. I think our Jewish brothers should help Adida out and go buy out their sneakers so they can get their money back because they helped y'all out. <laughs> that's what I think. But, you know, who, you know, listen, that's above my pay grade. So, you know, it's all good. I don't think they should help Adidas out. Adidas made a choice. You know what I mean? They chose, they chose to sever ties with their cash cow. So these are the consequences. I'm sure they were aware of it, but the problem is that, you know, they don't like to empower us and they don't want us to ever feel that we're empowered. So they're always going to play it off like they don't need us. And these are the consequences of those actions. So you know what? Sometimes you make your bed and you ain't got a lie in it. You got to fucking spend the rest of your life in it. So fuck you, Adidas. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is, Adidas. I, I have nothing else to say. A um, couple quick things, quick questions, man. I just want to play a game with you real quick. You want to play real a quick. game with me? I don't, Man, I don't I'm gonna play a fucking game, my nigga. Be here, nigga. Fuck I don't know if I like the way that sounds. <laughs> Listen, no, couple quick, couple, couple things. So, would you rather a chick, a skinny girl with no ass, but her coochie smell great, or a fat ass and the coochie don't smell that great? I'm big on hygiene. Give me skinny girl, good smelling. Vagina. I thought you like fat asses though. I do like fat asses, but hygiene is more of a priority. I think niggas ass. are still fuck a fat ass if your shit. If I shit, think niggas would, but I'm just not. With that one of those. smell on it, you I, gotta be like this hitting from the back. I think niggas would. I'm just not one of those niggas. <laughs> I'm just not one of those niggas. You gotta be from the back like this. No, I'm good. I'm good. Uh -uh. <laughs> All right, so. Hey. Been, been there and don't ever want to go back. All right, you've been there though, but you know when what I'm talking about. When I was in my teenage years. Yeah, when that, there, when that ass wolf back. just hit you. Oh, shit. What the fuck? All right, hurry up. I got to get this out. Yeah. No, hyg hygiene is, is very much a priority to me. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, regular nine to five or entrepreneur? Entrepreneur, definitely. Um, And the reason being is because I don't, I don't knock a regular nine to five, but I find that I'm not as motivated working for someone else at all. Um, you know, when I'm working for myself, I could, bruh, I can work 72 hours straight, not sleep and not care. But if I'm working for someone else, I can hardly do eight hours. I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm annoyed. <laughs> I, I'm used to getting up when the fuck I want to get up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If I had to work a nine to five because that's what I had to do. I wouldn't hesitate. Yeah, I mean, but if, if, if that's what God saw fit for me, then, yes. then, then, I, then look. I'm going to do what I have to do to take care of me and mine. I'm, 
it's not in me to sit on my ass. You understand? But my, you, you asked what, what my preference is. Definitely. No, nah, I'm just saying. But I think the other but is to me working the regular nine to five. Now they just set they just set the money up, right? Whether it's thirty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars you making, right? Me doing what I've been doing for so long, I know that I can um I could go get six figures. Mm-hmm. I know I could go get the possibilities are endless. Yeah, I I can go get five hundred thousand. And I think that and I could get ten thousand, but I know that. You have limited possibilities. Possibilities, with a nine to five. and with a nine to five, you can only. There's a ceiling. Get, yeah, There's a ceiling. This, this what you're gonna hit. Even if you get to the highest position, and then working for myself, I'm always challenging myself to go get bigger and better. I'm gonna give you. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you a story. Somebody told me right. So this guy goes to his job, and um, there's this beautiful Lamborghini sitting outside. So his boss comes out the Lamborghini. He's like, "Oh my God, man, that's a beautiful car." He was like, "Yeah, you know." He said, look, man, if you work real hard, mm-hmm. like for the next two or three years, I mean, if you put in some serious hours, I can get another one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bitch ass shot to slap the shit out that nigga, sir. But it's, but it's the truth, though. You know, um, if you don't chase your dreams, somebody will just hire you to help them chase theirs, bro. That's the reality of the situation. Mm-hmm. So that being said, money in the bank or money in your pocket? Cash. Um, now when you say what the exact same amount? Uh, if you want to put it that way, that's cool. I guess that's cool. So so you're basically saying hundred thousand cash or hundred thousand in the bank. In the bank. Um I'll take hundred thousand in the bank. I don't know, that's hard for me, man. I don't even carry cash in I, I I don't, but I love cash, B. I it's something about cash, man. You know what happened to me one day I went to the bank, right? And I would put my, ever since this happened to me years ago, I put my debit card in the bank and all my money was gone on that debit card. It was like a couple of thousand dollars, like four or five thousand dollars was gone. And I'm like, yo, who the fuck took my, and they just took my money. And then I had another problem with IRS <laughs> back in the days. And I woke up at fifteen thousand dollars was gone out of my account because I had owed some back taxes. So I feel like when you got digital money. That, and it, it's 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 accept, susceptible to anything happening to it any time. It is. And in, in, in IRS case, I ain't never get it back. In the bank case, I got it back in like two weeks, and I got it back. Mm. My, the whole thing in a month. They kept piecing me, piecing me every week till they paid me off the rest of the, the money that was taken out the account. Yeah. So sometimes I like hard cash in my pocket because. But cash, is, but cash, cash in itself is a problem, bro. And the reason I say cash is a problem is because. Um, there's a liability that comes with cash. You know what I mean? Cash is a better instrument. Cash can be stolen. You also have the fact, listen, you know how many people have rooms and rooms full of cash and they're looking for a way to clean it, to get it into the bank? So you're talking about illegal cash. I'm not talking about illegal cash. It, it could be legal, ca- legal cash. Man. Listen, whenever, Niggas say clean the fucking money. Listen, whenever like somebody it. say cash, that's automatically what my nah, mind goes to. I was, I was, I was not, I wasn't, that's why I'm like, I, I wasn't thinking like that. Not at all. Not one bit. Um, but I'm just saying, cash for me, I'm like, yo, I, and I just feel like, you know, me, me and Greg be having this conversation just in the future. There's going to be a point when, you know, they shit in China right now. They said they got a billion cameras in China. So they credit, they credit go down every time. So if a nigga mm-hmm. just litter on the floor, his credit status go down, and they just pull the money out of his account, out of the digital currency. Mm-hmm. I don't want to get to a point where I'm, I can't even control my cash. Yeah, but their plan is to phase out paper money, bro. So there's, I know, there's man. Gonna I'm going to hold on as much as possible, gonna man. There's going to be a point that's going to come where there's nothing you're going to be able to do about that. And the hoes, they don't take, they, they don't like digital currency. They like cash. <laughs> <laughs> the hoes like cash. So one more question. Do you, uh... Well, that's not true because they got cash app in their bios, bro. Oh, shit. <laughs> you're right about that. Yo, can I have an OnlyFans page, please? Go for it. Go for it. I think I want one though for myself. So go for it. Why not? But I don't want to do nothing to them for them. For them See, two, I don't want to do, do nothing for no men. Stra- do something strange for a piece of change. Yeah. Now, can I like put my feet out? Do you think women out there like men feet and they want to pay to see that? I'm not one of them, so I'm not. My homegirl getting money to show niggas her feet, bitch. She showed me her cash app from her OnlyFans page and she like showing her feet and stupid shit like that. She's not even her body. And I just saw her the other day. So it was this. like. Show your feet and don't show your face. And Not to no men, though. Just tell them you're a woman. Uh, go for it. I can't do that to me. I don't support this message, by the way. <laughs> Yo, Suave, you don't think women would take, like, they would pay for my feet? 
I got good feet, man. Uh, I don't know. Y'all want to see my know. shit? Look, I got good shit. What the fuck y'all talking about? This is crazy. Son. They might be ashy because I ain't got no, I ain't putting no lotion. Look at that shit. Look at that shit. First of all, the camera can't see your feet. It actually can. Oh, see? Oh, it can. You can see. Okay. Ah, look at my shit. You think I can show those on OnlyFans? If you would pay on OnlyFans to see these feet, leave it in Let the Let me comments. know, please, because she, yo, she sold me like forty some thousand dollars for niggas looking at her toes, be like, it be like that. Who the fuck is paying to look at this bitch's toes, my nigga? It be like that. A lot of dudes out there, you know. We look, we live in a weird world, man. To each his or her own. If that's what you want to do with your bread, more power to you. I'm just rubbing, for my, rubbing my feet. No, you're not. You're but I was to, on Spotify, you're trying, kid. A, you're trying to do a commercial for your OnlyFans. I'm not scared. Okay. If I want to see my feet on OnlyFans, let me know. because I'll, I'll, I'll put his uh, at name under... Uh, I just want y'all to let me know. So y'all can just DM C Styles 911. And, uh, yeah, hit, please. Hit him in the DM if, if y'all if want. Because I got uh, pretty feet. I ain't got jacked up feet for a dude. If y'all want feet porn. Oh, I can't get my sneakers back on me. Oh! I should untie them first. But anyway, last question for you. I can't believe I'm a part of this. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him, make you my footstool, just put my foot on your... Uh, make me your footstool. Yeah, put my foot right on your knee and just hold him up like that. I don't see that happening, but okay. I'd, I'd split the profits with you. I'm good, bro. This nigga bullshitting. Fuck out of here. I'm good, bro. Anyway, if you could do it all over again, would you have kids or don't have kids? That's a good question. Um... I think I would have children. Uh, the reason being, my kids just give me a sense of purpose. My kids give me motivation, inspiration. My kids are like the backbone to my ambition. You know, I don't think that I would go as hard if I didn't have children. And I, that's that was my answer. Like my baby, like she just made me want to do so much more. I, you know, so funny. Now that she an adult and she got a job and she working and she never home, she got a car. Why not buy a car? I don't know why I bought a car. She never home, son. And she never home. And um, you know what the problem is? I got to find things to make me go harder now. Yeah. I mean, I always say this. Like, I'm building on myself now more because it was like, yo, I'm paying for college. I'm paying for the car. Uh, I'm paying for school clothes. Yo, I got to make sure she get... This for her recital. That you know what I'm saying? So Yeah, but but see, but for me it wasn't even it, it wasn't even things that needed to be done. Like I'll give you a perfect example. Um I wrote two novels, right? When I wrote when when I even thought about writing my books, mm -hmm. aside from the fact that I wanted to challenge myself to see if I wanted to do it, it was also because I wanted to set these examples for my kid. Like I wanted my kid to go, if ever she got older and it was like, Could I write a book? Of course I can. I saw my dad do it. You know what I mean? It was the same thing. No, I'm, with, so, I, so the, I agree with you to with me, that. To me, the motivation wasn't even the responsibility. It was just setting the example. You know what yeah, I mean? Nah, because they're, nah, they're, they're always watching you. No, nah, I, I agree with you with that. I'm the same. For me, I just know the reason why I bought a house. I didn't mm -hmm. buy a house for myself. I could have lived in a fucking apartment, B, mm -hmm. and been fine. But something that if I die today, God forbid, yeah. baby girl could have it. You know what I'm saying? So... That's why, you know, so now I find myself, like, when she don't come home and she, you know, she grown now, it's like, I'm always trying to figure out, what else next I'm going to do now? You know what I mean? I'm like, but, you know what I'm saying? But, but you know what, I'm like an old young nigga, man. Like, this shit is crazy. I don't know what the fuck is going on my life. But you know what it is? I think um, that has a lot to do with how we're designed as men, right? Um, like I always say. I may not even be able to fight for myself, but I'll kill for the ones I love. Oh, 100%. Like, you understand what I mean? And I always say, place a man on this world alone, and he may not make it. You know what I mean? But give him someone he loves or something to stand for, bro. He'll take on the fucking world. Me, because because, 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 because it's, it's never about you. Mm -hmm. You ever thought about opening the church? Because you always come up with these spiritual yeah. miracle fucking quotes, my nigga. It's like, not spiritual miracle I'm just quotes, asking you, bro. can you I, open I, the church? I've lived a long life, and, and I've been through a lot of experiences. And the thing with me is I always do a lot of self-reflection. I'm just so asking, can we open up a church and collect some offer? Well, listen, <laughs> leave me alone. Man. So collect some offer. Yo, uh, other news real quick. Uh, Alabama councilman? Got arrested on federal charges for um, stealing uh, 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 from Walmart. 
from the uh, self-checkout. And I saw this interesting thing the other day that Target deliberately does. I got a homegirl, I ain't gonna name it because I don't want her to find her because of this show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But every time she goes to Target, self-checkout, yeah. she get busy in self-checkout, right? Yeah. And what Target does, they have a separate department outside of the agency, outside of Target, that just sits there and monitor their cameras mm -hmm. all day. And they don't come and get you if you still one, two, you nine, ten things. Amount. They wait till you get to a couple of thousand dollars till it's a felony yeah, because, charge. Yeah, because it's a felony charge. It's grand larceny. And then they come after your ass. So you could keep stealing from Target. And you know what I mean? And it's so easy, right? You go up there, you be like, oh, I'm just going to throw this one thing in the bag and walk out. You know what I'm saying? But they are watching you real crazy. And they just collect. They, they building that on you and building the case on you. So be very careful. I don't know why the congressman did it. But he got Because he's human. That's why. Okay, cool. People think that people, because people have certain positions and jobs, they're not human beings. I hear you. Well, he should have he chilled the fuck out. I mean, I, I agree, but I'm just saying, like, if, if it was a regular person, you wouldn't say, I wonder why he did it, because he's a congressman. The nigga's still human. Like, people are flawed, man. Listen, man, chill the fuck out. So I was watching some other shit that was kind of crazy. I just wanted to talk about it real quick, and I know we probably going to spend... Some we gonna have some questions. So I saw an old video near along, and she was saying that uh, she had went to a high school prom with a thirty-year-old man. <laughs> her mother gave the permission. Couldn't have been her father. I couldn't have been her father, kid. Um, so now thirty years old is kind of crazy, but I must say when I was growing up back in my day, mad niggas was coming up to high school. Yeah, and cars. Grown, grown man, 20, 24, 25 years old to pick up the girls. I used to go to Western House Night School. Doesn't make it okay? I'm not, I don't, I don't know if it makes it okay or not. You ever saw Kelly up there? Nah. Okay. I did see a lot of artists up there. I won't name a lot of your faith. <laughs> Yo, listen. I know who. Yeah, listen. A lot of your artists, your favorite artists, was coming up to Western House Night School to pick it up girls back in them days. And they was definitely in their 20, 24, 25 years old of age. So, uh, and then I, I think if you go up generation back before our generation, it was normal, right? Once again. I don't think it was normal. Hold, no, it was, no I'm, I'm saying in society it was normal. And once again, I, I don't think, think. I don't think it was ever normal, bro. Listen, what I'm saying, it was normal. It was justified and you could, nothing could happen because of it. When you was, there's people that got... Oh, you're talking about like back in the 1960s and 70s. 70s, 80s. Yes, the generation before us. I don't think 80s. 80s, think yes, 80s. it was normal. And even in the 90s when we were growing up, it was normal. Nobody was saying it. Like she said, her mama, the guy came and asked permission. I couldn't have been her father. And it was normal. And just like society now, not saying it's good or bad, but we, society is like, like cattle to me. We dictate... Not we, but the society, whoever doing it up above, Illuminati, whoever the fuck you want to call it, they dictate the pace of which way we go to go. Just like in another 10 years, from now 20 years, you know, if you have a um, transgender son or tra uh, uh, what you call that, binary, what you said it was? Non-binary. That's all going to be normal in the next 10 years. Every Right now, they're fighting for people to have equal marriages, same-sex marriages. Let me, let me tell you something. Regardless, of Things are going to change. Regardless of society's influence... And I always say this, the truest measure of right or wrong is what we would want for our children. Because people have all these preferences, people have all these opinions, but when it comes down to it, they what they would what they would allow for society to do, a lot of people don't want for their kids. Because the truest measure of right and wrong is what you would want for your children. So with with that being said, I ask you, would you want your sixteen year old daughter to deal with a thirty year old man? Now, this is what I would tell you. So the only way to answer that that question honestly, if you put me back in 1965, it would be a normal for that for that time period. So you wouldn't say anything in that time period because how, to, to, how hold do, up, how let, do you I know let you this? say what you're gonna say. How do you my know this when you're not hold in, up, you're... time out. I'm, I'll let you say what you're gonna say because if you went back to 1965, a gay person couldn't be out outside the way they could be outside the day, and it would have been it, it wasn't normal. Today, you, you you turn on your TV, you see two men kissing, and it's fine. Everybody's so, looking at it. Time out. Like I said, so in a different time period, something would be different in that time period. 
Would I do it now? No. So that's not a true testament because we still got to put a true testament with you is, feel. It is. It's it a is, taught behavior. It is, it is. These are taught behaviors. I don't think it's taught behaviors right, cool. because, because listen. Somebody I, mama I, right I, now got a father who watching this shit right now. Yeah. They mama is 30 and their father is 70. I, right I, fucking I, now. I, I totally agree with you. So, like, that, 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 that's, you that's a fact. But that's <laughs> that still, what the that fuck still you doesn't, about? That still doesn't mean that I would be okay with I'm not saying you would be okay. I'm just saying because if you was raised in a different time period, I asked you a question. I said, would you be okay with your 16 year old child dealing with a 30 year old man it's a yes or no question no it's not a yes or no question because we're talking about more than one thing you try to you try to put shit yo you can't pigeon me in a motherfucking box I you gotta to talk say, about the whole perspective. if i said styles would you be okay with your 16 year old dealing with a 30 no, in 1965 ne- then you could say that i asked you would yeah. you be okay with your 16 right now, year old daughter time, this, dealing with a 30 time, year old man yes this, or no this time that would never happen but when yes, I tell you, still haven't I, answered my but question. How we st- but we, how, I didn't answer the fucking question. I just told you in this time, no. What, what else you want me to do? Wipe my ass and tell I'm you what the fuck you, you want me to do? Time, yes or no? Like I said, in this time. Well, guess what? No. Me, whether it's 1965, nigga, whether it's 2,894, 3,054. This nigga is super, this nigga no, is super nigga. Okay Going back, what it. you want to say, my nigga? So, I would do it now. Now you deal with religion. I'm Muslim. Different. It's different. It's all about how you was raised. See like I said, that? it's all about perspective, B. Exactly. It's sixteen year old women, girls marrying thirty year old men in my religion. Yeah, I'm not okay with that. I, and listen, and, and by no means that I say I'm okay with it. What I'm saying is, we are we are positioned in this world to go with whatever's happening. We like sheep. I'm not. No, we like I'm sheep, not, B. I'm not. All right, cool. I'm not that because I always say all the right. world is changing, but you don't have to change with it when that change ain't for the all better. Right, cool. It is what it is. I don't. I'm, I, I don't follow. I don't follow right. the status quo. I don't go with society standards. All right, Moses. I, I, I have what's called independent thinking, which, right. which a lot of people lack today. All right, so Moses. So therefore, I just don't. I, I don't right. go with the flow. Right, whatever, but that's not my thing. You think the way you think because somebody taught you that way, nigga. You, no, you nobody fucking, taught me that right, way. Cool. Nobody Life taught you taught shit. Me. Experience you, all right, cool, taught then. me. So something taught you, nigga. All right, <laughs> Moses. <laughs> fucking nigga, man. Yo, my man Buster Rhymes, man. I see. What life would have taught you? Chick run up to you and smack you in your ass. Buster turned around and hit the bitch with a bottle. Like he didn't hit her with a bottle. He, he, he threw he a snap with bottle with some, or some no, shit. No, with some water. Nah, it wasn't water. It was snap. They said. Or some oh shit well, like. well, he spritzed it with some liquid, whatever was in the bottle. Do you think she was wrong to get? It, it I, I do. I do think that that she's wrong, and I, I think you know it's so crazy because um, I do believe that men and women aren't equal. Will never be equal in this whole. Uh, trying to get to equality. Mm -hmm. I think that it's putting the universe on tilt and it's throwing everything the fuck off, right? Mm -hmm. The truth is that to a degree, yes, she invaded his space, but women have have always gotten away with that, whereas men can't. And and I think that, and and this is why I said like this whole feminism and this quest for equality, it's, it's, it's throwing things off balance because what you're doing is you're opening a very dangerous door because if you want equality, then you then you deserve to get equality as a whole, right? But women want equality when it's convenient. <laughs> you get where I'm coming from, and when it doesn't benefit or it isn't convenient, they don't want it. But um, I do think that she was wrong for inv- invading his space. Regardless if she's a woman and he's a man, she shouldn't feel that she should just be able to touch him inappropriate like that, oh, inappropriately like that. And um, I don't disagree with whatever his reaction was. Yeah, I don't think nobody should be touched in any in any, any inappropriate way um, when they're not comfortably being touched. I do agree with you when you say that, um, you know, because when you said that men, I remember growing up and a woman just come up, or when you're even working out, oh, you got a nice chest. Mm-hmm. You just touch, rub your chest. Rub your chest. You, you, I, you imagine me going up to a woman and saying, oh, you got some nice titties. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it ain't going to happen, bro. It's not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, um, I, I've been in places. Women go, oh, you got a nice butt. And you say, woman got a nice ass right there, man. I'm, listen, I've just, had, pack, just leave the workplace. I've had, I've, 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 had, I've had women walk up to me and 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 grab me in certain places. You know what I mean? Um, Look at how you smile. Look. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> smiling because it's, because it's it's when you really think when you really think about it. Uh-huh. Um, it's nature, bro. It, it really is. It's it's nature. We are males and they are females. There are certain things that they can get away with that we cannot. 
And I'm fine with that because that is the natural balance of the goddamn universe. I feel like human beings are beginning to evolve so much. Yo, bro, we are the most disobedient species on this earth when it comes to nature. We, we, we really are. And, and the more we evolve and the more intelligent that we think that we become, the more we go against nature. The more we go against everything that is natural, the more that we think that we can improve on God's design. And I don't agree with it. Well, listen, man. Shorty, um, you can squeeze my butt if you like. Um, I ain't gonna hit you with no water, no snap. I just wanna let you know that. He gonna hit you with something else, though. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 uh, grab at your own risk, okay? Yo, other rap news. You see Playboy Cardi got arrested. Uh, unfortunate situation from choking out his baby mom. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. Um, over a paternity uh, discussion. Paternity conversation. I mean, what, what, what does that entail? I guess they, he was asking if the baby was his or not, baby. I don't know. Like, mm. Mm. Somebody better start talking. I don't know. I mean, listen, I, I don't condone the whole putting your hands on a woman. Uh, I, I even more don't condone putting your hands on a pregnant woman. Um, it's cr- it's but once again, allegedly. Allegedly. You know? it, but it's crazy, though. I don't know what that conversation was like, and I don't want to make no fun of it. You know, we try to make light and certain things and, and, and joke around, but if she got hurt, and it's no fun in that at all. But what can that conversation be like? Yo, is it baby mine? I don't know. I mean, listen, man, I hope y'all worked that out. Cardi, don't know what to tell you, bro. Keep your hands to yourself. Um, allegedly. Allegedly. So I was watching Charleston White this weekend, too. He was saying that he put three old block members uh, in jail. Now, this is an interesting conversation because where I'm going to go with this. He said that he don't snitch, he's telling because he's a citizen. And if somebody threatens him or do something to him, as a citizen, he has the right to go tell of what they did. It's different when you in the car with a person and that person and you and that person going to go do something together and now you snitch on him. But he said, if your partner's in the car with you, right, and he asks you for a ride and you going to work and you give him a ride and the cops pull you over, he throws some dope in the car and they find the dope and the cops go, yo, who dope is this? And he don't say nothing when you were just giving him a ride to work. He should be able, he has the right to tell and say, no, that's your dope. People, 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 this is the problem, right? I remember when when I came up, street dudes are the only ones that really spoke about the streets, right? And civilians remained as civilians. Now you have the fact that people who aren't qualified to have an opinion about the streets are allowed to speak on it. And it's just misinformation. Now, snitching, for one, has nothing to do with telling. What snitching is, is pretty much giving up information on someone to pretty much get heat off of your back or to get charges removed off of your back, to lessen your sentence. That's Mm -hmm. what snitching is. Now, I never believed that, first of all, civilians can't snitch. Civilians aren't involved in the streets. Their only line of defense is the police. So if you as a street dude want to threaten or press a civilian, his only way to defend himself is to call the police. So I don't disagree with that. Now, my problem with Charleston White, which makes it kind of gray area, is um, you're constantly provoking people. You're constantly threatening people. You say you carry your gun. And if any of you dudes come, this is what... Where he he had to carry a gun. Huh? It's legal to carry a gun. It is legal. And they got got the standing ground rules in a lot of those states. But this is my problem. If you threaten me, Mm -hmm. right? Charleston White has a habit of provoking people. Fuck your mother. Fuck your kids. Blah, blah. Bruh, you are a man. Disrespect is a blank check. When you disrespect someone, you're handing them a black blank check and you have no control on what they write on that check for your ass to cash. So wait, wait, wait. So once you extend the disrespect, that man may just say something to you. That man may slap you, punch you, stab you, shoot you. You have no control over that. That's the only gray area thing with me and Charleston White. Like, I feel like he's out there. He's out here baiting people, bro. 
Yeah, but you can't take the bait neither. We tell people all the time. You can't see somebody right on the internet, yo, fuck y'all, and then you get personal and find a nigga and want to go shoot him. Like, Why can't you? You, you, you can't. Why bro? can't you? Because there's consequences to that also. Okay, and, and, and it, wait, but but if you're willing Listen, to... If you're willing to yo, suffer... Bro, if you're willing to suffer the consequences... Right, cool, then you can suffer the consequences. What, what I'm saying to you is... On the normal circumstances, we gonna tell people not to react to stupid shit. Why would you listen to a, d a dummy to go fuck up your life? Cause this nigga wanna be a dummy. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is because that's the if that's the man the who constantly provokes people. Yo, and then bro, and wait people wait provoke people every wait, fucking day. Wait, wait, the man who constantly provokes people then tries to justify his actions of telling on them retaliating, like. I mean, I don't know what the whole situation with him telling on the yeah, dude from O'Block. I don't know what the situation is. I'm, I'm just, just saying, saying people, I, I got provoked before I fucking came here. Nigga, cut me off. Fuck you, uh... Nigga, I was supposed to jump out the car and shoot the nigga? That's not the same thing. Nah, it's the same thing. Nigga told me, fuck me or fuck me up. That's was, not the same why, why, why is not the same? That's not the same The nigga thing. provoked me. Because, I was provoked. No, because you and I both know, man. Charleston White taunts the same people over... Nigga, like, like, there's Charles, assholes like, like, everywhere instance, you go, bro. For, for, and you're absolutely right. There are. So I'm not going to sit here and tell kids, I'm oh, not, yeah, somebody provoked I'm you. He was not, a blank check no, to kick his ass. Like, I'm not... Listen, I'm not saying that it's a given that you should react. I'm saying if someone reacts, I cannot blame them. If somebody is yeah, constant, so then listen, you listen, hold on, hold on, hold on. Everyone has a limit, bro. Everyone has a limit. You disrespect me once. You disrespect me twice. You you continue. Everyone has a limit. Hey, everybody got a limit to turn the shit <laughs> off, like, turn their phone off, or turn turn the shit off, or don't listen to listen, it, don't follow them. Guess what? We can disagree say, to disagree. Could that same nigga who's talking that shit is still telling you, yeah, nigga, if you don't catch me and you do do something, I am telling. So you know the consequences that's happening behind that. Uh, 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 you know, unfortunately, it seemed like he got three niggas locked up for the same shit. So guess what? He's still on the motherfucking street. So I'm you look like the dummy if that's true. Bruh, I'm not saying that this is what people should do. Don't what play into people's hands what, and what, into what, their stupid what, shit. What man. I'm saying is if someone reaches their limit and choose to retaliate because of the disrespect, I can't be mad at them. I can't be mad at them because everyone's human, bro. You know, listen, on a regular day, that person may not react, but you don't know what that person might be going through one day where they just pissed off you, whatever's man. going on in their life. Them. And then, no, bro, sometimes this, this, sometimes the straw that breaks the camel's back is a I little thing. I hear you. I hear you. Like, no. Like but we got a lot no, of friends. I hear what, I hear we got a lot of friends that's in jail forever. I, I, I and hear, wish they could have had that self control. I hear today. everything that you're saying like, with self control. I'm just saying that people are human. That's I all. Hear you. On, on another case, uh, Tax Tone case has started in New York City. Mm -hmm. If y'all don't remember Tax Tone, he was one of the guys really doing the first kind of podcast stuff running around out here. Um, and he got to the shootout with Troy Ave. Irving, and, Irving, it wasn't a shootout. It was um, at Irving Plaza. They, uh, got, Irving Plaza, they yeah. got into the scuffle, and then uh, Troy Ave's boy Banger got shot. Um, and uh, they said Troy Ave disarmed him <laughs> and shot after him or whatever, and, and that was on video. And um, now, you know, Tax Stone's trial started, and they're saying that there are two witnesses, uh, <coughs> Troy Ave and one other guy. You know what's so crazy about that before we get into that? We had just saw Tax Stone like the night before, didn't we? Mm -hmm. We was at Rock Nation with him. And we was having a conversation, and it was so crazy because we were sitting there, we was in the meeting, I forgot what we were meeting about. We was at about. Rock Nation. I know, but I forgot what we were meeting about. Mm -hmm. And we had this long conversation, and he was like, yo, man, I ain't never going back to jail, mm -hmm. man. I ain't never going back there. And then the next day, it was like the shooting happened and all this it was shit. Like, I think it was like two days later. Oh, okay, two days. I just know it was like right after we saw him. And it was just unfortunate, you know, unfortunate for everybody in that situation. So how do you feel How do you feel about the fact that Troy Ave will testify? I don't know if he got a choice. If he can't testify, he got to testify. I, I think it's a, it's a thing, but he got to testify to keep himself out of jail. Now... And he felt like he was the victim. I don't I, fucking know. I, I, was he a victim in that situation? I I, or, or, or or was he a, a gangster in this situation? I mean, what I don't agree with is I'm just asking, I don't I don't have this no, above my pay grade. I don't fucking I'm, know. I'm just gonna say what I don't what I don't agree with is this, right? These are the facts. Mm -hmm. The facts are that uh there was a scuffle, uh allegedly Taxstone shot banger, Troy Ave disarmed him, and shot in self-defense that is the reality that is the fact right so that would make him a victim um yeah that would make him a victim that okay. would make him a victim 
Now, this is my thing. There are so many witnesses there that regardless of whatever, the truth is going to come out in court. I mean, it's still a chance that you're taking because sometimes the truth doesn't come out in court. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the, the best way I can explain it is this, right? So when my daughter's mother passed, right, mm -hmm. and my daughter came to live with me, I made a decision. The decision was, you know, not that I was involved in the streets or whatever, but my, my decision was that I'm not going to put myself in any positions to be taken <coughs> away from my child, right? 100%. So that's before I got into a situation. Mm -hmm. You get where I'm coming from? Um, I didn't wait until I got into a situation and to be sitting in a cell, right? To mm -hmm. go, yo, you know what? I'm going to have to tell on niggas because my daughter's too important. No. I made the decision before. You understand where I'm coming from? My only my only issue with the Troy Ave thing, I mean, to each his own, everybody does whatever they want to do, is the fact that um, it was all this gangster talk. It was all this gangster talk before. And then the second you get snatched up and now you're facing some prison time, now the streets are a myth. You Now conveniently, now you switch up. You understand? Had beforehand you said you was a civilian, then I could agree with you taking a stand. But nigga, you were a gangster up until the point where this happened. You were a so-called no, gangster I, 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 I up until that. the point this happened. I, and then now, when you're in the hot seat, now no, you're I, I get that up. point, but I, I like to play devil advocate too with you because I feel like a lot of times, a lot of us think these rappers are really gangsters. I don't. they say shit on I record. Don't. I'm not saying you, bro. Like... You taking it personal? No, I'm not taking it personal. I'm personal. saying I'm saying. that's what the world go. Cause you mm -hmm. said, yo, he was mm -hmm. talking. Every time, anytime I heard him talk, gangster was on record. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, sometimes these people are not who they what they say they are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I mean, we talk about that all the and time. And they switch back and forth. One day they're gangster, next minute they're civilian. So I don't, I don't really know. I just think it's unfortunate for these brothers to even have to somebody to lose their life. For both parties. And you know, and for both parties, for for tax home to be locked up in a jail. I feel sorry for everybody that's involved. You know, I wish it was a situation that they could have worked out and resolved differently, man. Well, I, so, think, I, think, I think brothers need to make better decisions, man. Um, the simple fact that somebody who had, like, a renowned podcast, who had a following... Uh, yeah, it was big. It was big. Would, yeah, would, would put themselves in that... Like, to me, I, I just don't understand the logic. How the hell did you think that you could get away with this? Like, it's like... It was like the uh, the Club New York shooting with Sean, with Diddy and J-Lo right there. How did you think you were going to get away with that? I just don't understand. Well, we got some stories of our own, we can't say on the tape. <laughs> so, Listen, you live and you learn. So, All I know is when God tapped me on the shoulders, I heed it. I heed yeah, it, bro. You know, listen, son, I, can, I can name a couple of sticky situations, bro. Yeah, I mean, okay. Uh, we ain't going to go there, but... Other courtroom battles, which, you know, I, this is what I, I, I'm passionate about a, a lot here, and I feel for. Um, I saw two courtroom fights this week. Uh, one with the Buffalo shooter. The Buffalo shooter, yeah. Um, some one of the family members tried to attack him while he was in court. And then there was another, uh, I want to say, Ohio, in a courtroom, a, a, a toddler was killed. Uh, they killed, I think they stabbed the cop toddler and threw him in a river. And the father attacked him on the, on the, um, on the, while he was in trial. I can't even And for me, imagine that, man. for me, if I'm the bailiff in those situations, of even if I'm the judge, I'm letting that rock. I'm letting it rock for two minutes, man. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to let it rock for two minutes, but, maybe 30 seconds. But, but it's also a liability to the court. No, fuck if they it, allow man. that, then, you know. I they, hear you, they, man. They, but they get sued. when you talking about this motherfucker in Buffalo killed 10 people. He, he destroyed 10 families, man. He deserved every ass whooping that he could possibly and get. You, when you decide to take a life of a baby, I don't even know what the problem was, how it happened. I it can't even, even imagine. It that, don't even bro. make no sense. They said he stabbed the baby and threw it in the river. You deserve to get your ass whooped every kind of which way. And they should let it rock. I seen it. The village, they was real like, calm down. Chill out. There ain't no fucking calm down and chill out. But that's and you know what I be wanting to ask, too? I, to me, when I see people like that, right, I really, this is the thought that come in my head. I want to know if the roles were reversed, would you beg for your life? Would, would you, you, if somebody put a gun to your face, 
or somebody was going to stab and throw your kid in the river, would you beg for that life? Would you beg for your life? If you was in the supermarket and somebody came in there with an AR to try to shoot you and just kill you for no reason? Would, would you beg for that life? Would, would the shooters beg oh, for the, all the killers? Would they be the, I mean, because I you know, feel like these niggas would but, beg for their those, life. But, those, and they, but, and they, they be, I, but they be the biggest cowards. <laughs> and that's the shit that I'm saying to you. Because they, they're the same ones that, yo, I kill everything. And then... No, What's some, it, it's not even they'll kill everything. Put an AR in their hand, okay, but take that gun away, bro. Them dudes be the biggest fucking cowards, man. Like, you know, and I think that that's where, that's where we differ. You know, and not to compare it to police. Police have a habit of thinking that they're tough, right? And this is what I realized. I realized that a lot of times there's no difference between police and the same people that they call criminals. The only difference is that police have the permission to do wrong, and that's why they do wrong, right? So there's nothing tough about what you do because you have permission to do it, like, whereas with the so-called criminals, they do it regardless of the fact that they know that they'd have to pay consequences for it. You know, and 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 and, and I think it's it's the same thing with these with these fucking shooters. Like, put the AR in that man's hand, yeah, you can go and kill ten people, but put him in a cell with three or four black guys, bro, and he's not even gonna say a fucking word. Not and, and bitch up, you know what I mean? So it's just unfortunate to get in that situation. But next time, Judge Billups, let let the niggas get their ass with for like thirty seconds. Get, at least a good thirty seconds, be like, just let them get let the family get it off, be. Let them get theirs, exactly. That shit is crazy, man. I agree. Um, Shoot both the motherfuckers in the head. Nah, definitely. R.I.P. to uh, De La Soul. To uh, Boy the Dove. Yeah, uh, Dave from De La Soul, man. Um, such an unfortunate death, man. You know, How'd he die? I don't know. Uh, allegedly, somebody was told me was from he had something with his heart problem. I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know if that's the truth or not. So I'm, allegedly, I don't know. Um, yeah, but he was young, though. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and it's just unfortunate, man. You know, I remember coming up and watching Video Music Box coming mm -hmm. home and seeing me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I, my buddy. My, that it, was it, my, my joy. <laughs> Ramon E. Love? Oh, my, oh God. my God. And Jungle Brothers, that oh, was my man. joint. My buddy was my oh, joint. My God. So, Hello, it's the soul. <laughs> trooping in with the Daylight Patrol. And this is something that's about the KO. Yeah. Hold up. Wait a minute. That was my Just joy. wait. Yeah, we're going to talk about buddy, buddy on, on this plate, plate. <laughs> before we step out the gate. The yeah, jungle, man. the jungle, the brothers, the brothers. Yo, big up, uh, big up Dave and his family and uh, everybody, um, and uh, De La Soul, man, and to, to the hip-hop community, man. Um, it was a great group, man. And those groups, they, you know, I, you, you got to love them because they last the, the test of time. You know what I'm saying? Not just, not just the test of time. I mean, you know, why I give De La Soul mad respect was the fact that Yo, it took courage to make that kind of music at a time when everybody else was making something else. You know what I mean? People, you, you, you're ridiculed for that at first before people love you. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's kind of looked at as corny. I even saw Nas post something with him and he said, thank you for having the courage to do something that I, I didn't have. You know, because Nas went that other route. Other route, yeah. Yeah, you know, but... um. Yeah, man. R.I.P. Enough respect and um, yeah, enough man. love and prayers out to his yeah, family. I got man. a lot of memories with the De La Soul music, man. It's just you know, it was always this good feeling music. And go, growing up, going to shows, man, the, the, those brothers just rocked the show, man. Like they got the crowd, man. They know how to make the crowd participate, and they just had songs that was timeless, man. So uh, you definitely would be missed, man. Um, yeah, and uh, like I said, R.I.P. to you and your family, man. It's rest well. Um, other news, I seen a young lady, I need this woman in my life, I need some woman like this in my life. She, she swam from Bangladesh to India to meet up with a nigga she met on Facebook to marry him. Yo, that's crazy. I can't even get, her, get a girl to come to my house just on a train. Like, <laughs> she, she swam from Bangladesh. Can somebody look up how far is Bangladesh from India, please? She got some strong swab, ass. Swab, swab. Can you tell me how? Strong arms and legs. Yeah, because I, I, I got to know. And she got arrested when she got there. She got arrested for what? <laughs> I don't know. They say she, the article says she got arrested. It's against the law this I don't. I, maybe she was supposed to be in Bangladesh. I don't know. It's a lovely, 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 I'm thinking about that. I know. The Indian joint. That was that J. The, the yeah. Yeah, my nigga. I need me an Indian chick. Give me a chick with a red dot on her head, please. Let's go come to this one. This guy's crazy. Yeah. 
<laughs> Listen, man. I want to eat curry all day, nigga. Fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> Can somebody tell me how many miles of India to make of this, please? 2,500. 2,500 miles? Yeah. Fuck out of here. Those sharks ain't... <laughs> <laughs> she ain't swimming that. That's Yo, not what she could. She had a magic carpet, she my really, nigga. Fuck out. What are you she about? really swung from Bangladesh. Bangladesh. That's what the article said. You now. Nah, I can't be no twenty five hundred. I don't know what Bangladesh it is. That's nine hundred ten miles. Now nah, that's, that's still crazy. Nine hundred and ten miles. Say thirty hours driving. That's still crazy though. That's still crazy though. I mean, listen. Yeah, that's that's incredible. She wanted her Valentine. I ain't mad at it. That's incredible, B. I, I ain't mad at it. Listen, man, I love you know, real love is so hard to find these days, man. That's I love incredible. I love stories. I love stories when people go above and beyond for So you swim in the Bangladesh, nigga? You gonna swim in the Jersey? You gonna swim in Huston? For the right woman, I would. No lie. For, yo, can for, I find for, the right woman for, for this nigga? I want to see him listen, jump in the Huston River and swim. For the, for the, yo, swim bro, listen, for the woman I love, brother, there's no limits to what I would do. And, and how about this? No limits. Let's, no, hold up. No let's, limits at all? Let's, let's say this. No limits at wait, all? Wait, wait. Because you know I'm going with let me, this. Let me finish what I'm saying. But he only want me for to the, say what I want to say. Who, for the woman who loves me, there's no limits to what I would do. No limits. Master P, nigga. No limits at all. What do you mean, bro? Like, <laughs> come on, like, come on. You always gotta go left with some bullshit, bro. Like, I'm not, but I'm, I'm not betraying myself or lowering my integrity for okay. nobody. Like, oh, okay, now, now he got standards. Yo, this I've week, I've always had standards. Yo, bro. I wanted to say this weekend, I'm excited because Ant Man is coming out, y'all. It looks so good. I'm so hyped. So go like see Ant Man, kid. huh? You're like a big kid. Bro. I don't care. I'm gonna go see Ant Man. Nigga, like, I'm gonna go see Ant Man. My man Kane. I'm gonna go see Ant Man, and then I saw the preview for Flash. They had the old Batman. Uh, what's the what's the old nigga that used to play Batman? Um, Adam, Adam West. West. Nah, nah, nah. Um, the first Batman. Come on, the first Batman when they had the medallion that came out. Keep. Nah, Michael not. Keaton. Michael Keaton is in it. Yeah, they got Supergirl in it. And then they got uh So you sound like a big kid. I don't care. And they got the uh galaxies of the uh the Garden of the Galaxy. The Garden of the Galaxy. Well, that's what it's called. Uh, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. I'm the just Guardians, excited. Guardians. Guardians of the Galaxy uh, of Galaxy, whatever's coming out. Part three. So I'm excited about all those, but I'm excited because I'm gonna go see Ant Man this weekend, God willing. So you know what I mean? It's gonna be a great weekend for I'm me. I'm happy for you, bro. I'm happy for you. You know I got an Ant Man on me right now, right? I don't even understand what the hell you're talking about. What is he talking about? My Ant Man grows too. Yo, bro, come on, bro. Like, yo, 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 oh, better news though. I got three things I want to complain about this week. Things he wants to get off his chest. Yeah, I got three things I really want to get off my chest, man. Things I don't want to see no more right now. No more. I don't want to go on my fucking Instagram. I don't want to see no more chicks in a crib twerking with their kids in the room, with their kids participating in into the, the twerk or cheering them on into to the twerk. No I more twerking with toddlers. I don't want to see that shit, be Like, that shit is... I don't even understand how that's cute with your fucking kid and your ass is shaking or you got your kid ass shaking with you or your son clapping for you because your ass is shaking. Well, you know... The feminists would say, stop trying to control women's bodies. That's what they would tell you. Shut the fuck up. Anyway. I agree. <coughs> Shut the fuck up, feminist. <laughs> She's crazy. Next thing I want to see. Yo, if I go to another club and I'm stuck in the line behind a nigga that got to get his purse checked, I'm going to have a problem, son. I don't want to see niggas with their purse... We Gotta don't give a damn if your purse is Goyard. We don't give a shit if it's Louis Vuitton. We don't care if it's Dior, Gucci, Poochie, Hoochie, Nucci. Yo, bruh. I don't want shit. Cut that shit out, man. Niggas is check checking niggas' purse like, yo, hold on. Like, 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 y'all wallets can't fit in y'all pockets no more. Like, yo, like, listen, seriously. like, yo, I gotta check his purse. They opening a nigga purse like this. Like, dudes don't even carry cash like that now, man. Come on, we got bank cards, man. Like, it shit, shit can fit in your pocket, bruh. This shit is crazy. And the last thing. If you owe me money, give me my shit back. If you owe me any money, please, I implored you to give me my shit back. I don't want to have to look for you for money that you owe me. 
I don't want to call you and be like, oh, yeah, I forgot. How you forget? You didn't forget to ask me for the fucking money. So those are three things I want to get on my chest this week, first and foremost. And I'm going to close the show out real quick, just bigging up Rihanna. She what looked, up, Ray Ray? She looked good on the Super Bowl. I ain't watched the Super Bowl. Nah, I love Rihanna. She looked so good on the Super Bowl. ASAP Congratulations, Rocky. Rihanna. I'm going to respect ASAP Rocky and their relationship, but Rihanna is beautiful than a motherfucker. I'm going to... Was she, was she from Barbados? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go to Barbados and find me a Rihanna, my nigga, because she was beautiful. And big up to the young lady that was doing sign language. She was really dope. I saw it on the internet this week. I like the move she has. Um, I thought that was different. You know, I never seen nobody dance and do sign language like that. You know, I mean? I Things I want to get off my chest. I'd like black people to stop being <laughs> impressed with dumb shit. <laughs> Yeah. Here, go, here go this hating ass nigga right here. <laughs> but, you know, this is another episode of Brooklyn Boy Radio because I want to argue with this nigga right now. Yo, so. yo, yo. Yeah. We see y'all next week. Shout out to the Wood Stacy. Tico. Wood Stack in the house. Lady, y'all. Brooklyn. Out.